Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hi, folks. Uh, Welcome to another episode of Pro Football in the 1970s. I'm your host, Joe Zagorski, and today we'll be talking about the incredible rookie class of the 1974 Pittsburgh Steelers. But before we do, I'd like to say that this episode of Pro Football in the 1970s is dedicated to the late Frank Redding, who sadly passed away just before Super Bowl 56. May he rest in God's eternal peace. To say that the 1974 Pittsburgh Steelers had a quality offseason is an extreme understatement. Well, Their front office management and coaching staff certainly had a quality offseason. They earned that designation for what they accomplished in the annual player draft and in their signing of free agents. The Steelers acquired five rookies during the 1974 offseason who would one day be honored with the ultimate professional football honor, that of enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. No one really knew for sure what the team had when they obtained Lynn Swan, Jack Lambert, John Stallworth, Mike Webster, and Donnie Schell. But by the end of their careers, everyone knew that they had witnessed the golden age of Pittsburgh Steelers rookies. It is probably very safe to assume that no team throughout the NFL's future will ever be able to produce five rookies in one draft and a free agency class who will don a gold Hall of Fame jacket. That's just in one off season. Five of them. It was indeed an incredible accomplishment and one that will withstand the test of time as far as greatness is concerned. Let's look at each one of these five individuals. The flashy wide receiver from the University of Southern California by the name of Lynn Swan was the first player that the Steelers chose in the 74 NFL draft. Swan would be the 21st overall pick and he would go on to a stellar career. He he was a member of the first four World Championship Steeler teams in 1974, 75, 78, and 79. Uh, He became uh, the first wide receiver to ever be awarded with a Super Bowl Most Valuable Player Award following his performance in Super Bowl X. Swan uh, snared four passes in that game for 161 yards against the Dallas Cowboys and that included the game-winning 65-yard reception on a bomb from Pittsburgh quarterback Terry Bradshaw. Uh, The next Steelers rookie from 1974 to be enshrined in Canton was middle linebacker Jack Lambert, who was selected in the second round of the draft with the 46th overall pick. Lambert went to Kent State, and he proved to be the natural reincarnation of the great Dick Butkus. Both of those linebackers were on par with each other when it came to meanness. Lambert had the snarling look on his tooth-missing face, and even though he was as thin as a beanpole, he played with the ferocity of a wild animal. Lambert took everything personally, and he distributed punishment in every game and in every practice. It was as if he had a perpetual chip on his shoulder the size of a boulder. He played angry, and his anger helped to lead him straight to the Hall of Fame. John Stallworth didn't play angry, but he got the next call to join the Steelers. He was selected in their fourth round, the 82nd overall pick. Kind of ironic, because that's the number that Stallworth wore when he was with the Steelers, number 82. Stallworth hailed from Alabama A&M and was overlooked by many teams. Teaming up with Swan, 
Pittsburgh now had two of the best wide receivers in the game. The addition of Stallworth allowed the Steelers to expand their offense from a solid running team to a solid running and passing team. They were now becoming as formidable in office as, as the league would witness thanks to this 1974 draft. The fun was not over yet in Pittsburgh. In the fifth round, Steelers head coach Chuck Knoll chose Wisconsin center Mike Webster. Throughout the mid to late 1970s, no center in the NFL was in the class of Webster. Even in practice, someone as strong as Pittsburgh defensive tackle Joe Green could not manage to move Webster. Throughout his magnificent efforts, uh, both Franco Harris and Rocky Blyer became 1,000-yard rushers, and Terry Bradshaw had plenty of time to locate his wide receivers deep downfield. Webster died prematurely at the age of 50 in 2002. One more Hall of Famer came to the team in 1974, but not through the draft. Donnie Torpedo Shell was signed by Chuck Knoll as a free agent to shore up the Pittsburgh defensive secondary. He began his pro football career as a reserve safety, but he eventually worked his way into the starting lineup. Few were the defensive backs who could deliver his hit as strong and as rapidly with as much force as Donnie Shell, however. He waited 33 years to get the call from the Hall of Fame, but it was certainly worth the wait. So that's five different rookies, five different completely different backgrounds. Each of these players earned a gold jacket, a Hall of Fame bust, and they, in their own way, helped to make the Pittsburgh Steelers one of the greatest dynasties that the game would ever see during the 1970s. Now, the trivia question for this episode, besides Donnie Shell, what other rookie defensive back made the Steelers roster as a rookie in 1974? We'll have that answer uh, somewhere down the road. Anyway, thanks for listening in to this episode of Pro Football in the 1970s. I'm your host, Joe Zagorski, and I look forward to chatting with you again next time. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories, and Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.